welcome back to another edition of Soda City Jams. We're here on Sunday, August 21st with Vince McKinley. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Of course. So um, why don't you start by just telling me a little bit about your musical career in the city and kind of an overview of what that's been like for you. Okay. been playing actively probably since uh, high school okay. in the late 70s to date myself. And... Uh, really started kicking off with bands in uh, late 80s, was in a band called Dolphin Run, was the first real electric band that I was in, and then from there it went into uh, Serengeti in the mid-90s, Okay. and played all over, uh, and then it turned into the, a couple of changes and drummers or bass players became the Vince McKinley Band, Okay. and was more of a regional band, played the tri-state area. And the whole time I was doing that as well, doing uh, acoustic shows, you know, in, in between those gigs. Wow. So I always tried to stay busy, busy. Yeah. So yeah, the acoustic show is very well received, has been, you know, ever since I've been throwing it out there. And, uh, and I think it helps promote the bands that I've been in as well. Oh, for Currently sure. Currently in a band, Sugar Leaf, that uh, we're really excited to be in the studio. We've got, got about five songs done. and. Got to try to knock the, the next five out by the end of the year and hopefully have a CD out. Oh, that's fantastic. Yep. Wow, that's so exciting. So is yeah. that, that's going to be your debut album? For that band, yes. For that, okay. It will be, right. yeah. Okay, cool. Right. Well, that's awesome. So when you were playing around the Tri-State area, um, did you enjoy that, like going to I did, yeah, I did. And... It's good to get out, see new people, see yeah. new venues. Yeah. Yeah, but Did we like getting home at night too, so the, yeah. the hotel thing is... <laughs> oh yeah, I'm the same way. Not my speed, I like getting home. Yeah, I get homesick too, and it's like you, you know, it's not, there's like, everything has its place, Yeah. you know? Yeah. So did did you have a favorite or like, you know, super memorable experience when you were traveling around, or just one that you always hold on to, or... Uh, we had a lot of good experiences with a place called Smoky Joe's up in Charlotte. Oh, cool. And it was just a cool bar I could go on all day about the way this place is decorated uh -huh. and just I mean just funny stickers furniture made out of like Matterhorns and just yeah just a very cool place and very very nice people always took care of us yeah so yeah no bad no bad stories about those kind of experience just just good thank goodness very well, blessed great. to have nothing but good stories about yeah. some of those places that's fantastic i'm from charlotte and i've never been to smoky joe so that's oh, funny to i'll have to check it out place. it's cool very yeah because cool. my parents still live um on the outskirts of charlotte so um so i'll have to check that yeah. out for sure yeah you'd like it um so how did covid directly impact your musical career that's a good question because um when covid hit we actually had a CD release uh, planned for a solo CD that I did. I built my own studio, put together, I wrote all of it, played just about all the instruments except for one song. I had some friends join me on just because I love these guys, they're so talented. But we actually sat on the CD because we wanted to release it at one of our favorite places to play. That's very important to a, to a musician when they do their CD release. For sure. And we decided it would be our neighborhood bar, Foxfield. We have lots of good memories there. And of course, they book up pretty quick and stay booked pretty, you know, pretty solid. At, at, at very understandably, it's a great place. Oh, yeah. And so we kind of sat on the CD for a few months waiting for this and got a, finally got a date with them. And while we were planning on, all right, God, we want to release this CD so bad. I've got it sitting in a box in the living room, but we want to do it at the party. And in that window that we were waiting is when COVID hit. Oh. And it just, so we decided, well, we'll just, you know, they said it'd be over in two weeks, you know. <laughs> oh, God, so, yeah. so, okay, even if it takes four weeks, even if it takes two months, we waited this long, we'll wait. Mm -hmm. And it just took years. wasn't happening. So we just went ahead and didn't do a CD release, never formally did a CD release party, but we just announced that we had this CD for sale. And we had, we had people coming by the house to pick it up. Oh, wow, that's Just really like nice. everybody else, we were doing what we could. We'd mail one if we had to. Or, yeah. So, but... I actually stayed busy playing through COVID. We had some clubs that uh, would do like to-go food at the bistro was one place that did it. And they said, if you would just want to stand over here on the side while people are waiting for their orders, I'm sure they'd love to be entertained. And we had people sitting in the cars in the parking lot with their windows down that just were clapping in between songs and just loving it because people were starved for, for um, entertainment. 
Yes. And absolutely. So whatever way we could, whatever the clubs had, I got a crazy idea. How about this? You know, like that. We'd go, yeah, sure. I'd love to play. And people are, you know, dying to, to get out and hear some entertainment in a safe way. Yes. You know, we didn't do anything that would endanger people. But, right, for sure. But yeah, we, we played through the whole thing. That's fantastic. Yeah. It's like making it work. Just that's very yeah, keeping up a positive attitude. And, yeah. Yeah, that's great. I know um, what you said about being starved for entertainment is so true, especially music, because when you're so there's so many norms that got disrupted during COVID, but music is one of the ones that just was it just felt so weird to not be able to go see live music on right. a regular basis right. and not be able to play live music on a regular basis. I'm right. And sure. I, I love to be entertained too. We, you know, right. Occasionally I look at my calendar and I say, there's nothing, there's no concerts or anything on here. We had to do something about that. So, yeah. So I love I, I that. Know how that. I know how that feels to be on that side too. Yeah. Well, that's exactly the kind of people that we love to have in the city. Like let's do something about no music gigs coming up because that's, you know, we lo obviously we love to support local music right. and just see what's out there. And even if it's like whether we, you know, we like everything we hear or not, like it's still great just to see local musicians, you know, implementing their own creativity and their own touch on things. It's just I will listen to pretty much anything yeah. and just see it just to check it out. Yeah, you know, for sure. Yeah, so absolutely. it's cool. And um, I really like the support of people like leaning out their car windows and clapping like that's so beautiful and it's so yeah. encouraging to hear that in such kind of a dark weird time absolutely where we're all trying to navigate you know yeah, and absolutely we've talked about in the past with artists we've interviewed how um, music breeds connection and that's one of the biggest most important things about music and so during COVID that was hard but I tell you what like musicians around here like you like they made it work yeah. whether they had to do live streams right or just anything like right they made I never it work. did a live stream I, I, oh yeah if I had if if this happened again, I would do a live stream. Now. Okay. But to me, it just seemed very strange to, at the end of the song, not to have somebody. It does tell, feel strange. Tell them that you like it, so you just have to assume they're out there loving it. But right. I watched a lot of live streams, so I get it too. Yeah. Yeah. It was. I, I was thankful that some of my musician friends were doing that. Yeah, it's cool. I, it's just cool to see everybody, like we were saying, like just keeping a positive attitude and doing whatever they could to spread the music and spread the love and you know especially right. when you have a new cd and yeah. then you won't be able to hear it. like i can't imagine how frustrating that it was. was that was very very frustrating yeah. yeah um and it was cool too about the live streams because it was catching on everywhere so like local artists were doing live streams and famous artists were doing live streams like there was some dave matthews band live streams i watched just personally yeah. like everybody was doing live streams it seemed like whether they were yeah. a small musician or a big musician and right it was just and cool. there was a lot of ham good handful of people telling me why aren't you doing these live streams Aww. and it just didn't feel natural no i totally so. understand it's something you definitely have to get used to yeah i'm sure because it's just so different yeah. and it's not you know seeing people comment is not the same <laughs> not as the like same. being there it's just so not the same. i'm sure that would take some getting used to for right. sure so yeah. yeah um so uh what was your first guitar my first guitar was brown <laughs> <laughs> actually it was my dad's guitar he, okay. he played just a few chords you know, I'd have to play a couple of songs to us at night sometimes, but oh. um, they, my parents were both very supportive. And when they saw me tinkering with that guitar, they uh, decided they were going to get me one. Oh. And I do have a memory of us, you know, this is a long time ago, but we were looking for a music store when we, when we first moved back here. And my dad took me to a music store, and I think we both looked at all the zeros on the price tags and went, this isn't going to happen, you know. Yeah. So... They actually ordered me one out of a Sears catalog that ended up being a fantastic guitar. And I think for the first week, all I did was just, it was an electric guitar that had whammy bar and, you know, all these crazy buttons on it. And I know for the first week, all I did was look at it and go, wow, that looks like some kind of a weapon of, you know, mass <laughs> invention. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I was very, very tickled to get such a wonderful guitar. Yeah. But, yeah. It doesn't have to be a, a Les Paul or a no, it doesn't. Not something at all. fantastic. I mean, yeah. even now I play a guitar that is not considered the upper echelon, very unaffordable guitars. You know, I play a, a Carlo or Bailey. It's probably an in, entry level guitar, but it plays better than my Taylors, Martins. It's just whatever works for you. Me, so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's that's, per, it's a personal. Yeah, that's choice, one thing yeah. I learned young. Is it's the, the instrument talks to you. 
I love that. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, it's kind of a first guitar. Everybody that we've talked to pretty much says that their first guitar was like kind of a shitty guitar. Yeah. And it kind of reminds me of a first car when you're like 15, you know, and it's like, some, well, some people do this, but it's like, you know you're going to wreck that car. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're thinking about the next one while you're like, driving that one. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, why would, like, you just need something that will get you driving. Right. And so that's kind of what I think about with music. It's like, yeah. you just need something that will get you playing, get you practicing, get you holding an instrument. That's and that's, too. that's what matters. And some people have nice guitars for their first guitar. Like, no shame, no matter what. But oh, no, no, no. I, it just reminds me of when you first start to drive. Like, that's what I always think about. Yeah. And I always say, if you can play through a song and you didn't think about the guitar because mm. it's you know it's like part of you it's when you play a song and you. that's your guitar I like that yeah um, and I know like John when he, we talked to him um, like his first guitar was some loner guitar you know like a he got it from someone in the church he was going to and it was just like a shitty guitar but it was a guitar right and it got him playing music and he was looking at his songbooks and he was practicing and he wore it out so wow. that's what matters, yeah. you know? <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. Um, so you're in, so you've been in several bands throughout several decades. So did you, have you ever pinned down what you think are some important traits in a musical companion? Um, well, since I love to write music so much, I've never really wanted to be in a cover band. So the first step is that they appreciate where I'm coming from, what I'm trying to do with a song, and that um, they can contribute to it and, and support it and take it to another place as well. And that it's, you know, part of as much, as important to them as it is to me about making this song the best that it can be. And we've auditioned people before that, that said, man, you and the drummer are just so locked in together, but you know, I, I, I want to do cover tunes or they're just not feeling the, you know, the vibe that, that we're doing. Or, you know, it's it's a lot to ask for somebody to step in and play your original music. For sure. You know. Because that's raw. That's yeah. you, you know. Yeah. And, yeah, if I say I'm going to start a band I've already got 30 original songs or more, you know, you kind of have to love the, love that music. To, for sure. Just all the time you're going to, an effort you're going to spend on that that project absolutely especially when you know you have to sit if you're coming in fresh and you have to sit down and learn those songs you know it's important that you do appreciate and value them because that's your i mean we always say you know writing songs the closest thing to being naked like it's just a very raw it important is. thing and um not that other people can't have input or anything but it's just if you've already got the material and right. you're bringing people in then it's important that it there's like a cohesiveness to it sure yeah. and they can do what they want to do I don't care if somebody changes the bass lines to an original song if it's a new bass player you know as long as it's as good or better than the last guy it usually is right. for sure so I'm very very blessed to have talented musicians playing with me right now oh that's great that's the really um not underrated is not the word but that's just really important it is yeah it makes me feel like I'm in a super group oh I love that <laughs> Um, so would you classify your, I get it, it's hard to pin down like one inspiration, but you had said that your dad could play a little bit. So would you classify him as one of the reasons you wanted to start playing guitar? It definitely had, a, especially when you're at, at that age, very, very young. It just seems like it's the closest thing to magic mm -hmm. is just seeing how, you know, something beautiful is coming out of that piece of wood. It's just, how can you do that? Mm -hmm. And then, uh, of course, I... I'd throw on a Beatles album and listen to Hold Your Hand and try to figure out how to make notes match. Guitar probably wasn't even in tune. And I just, I was just, you know, amazed by that. Magic is what it was to me. Mm -hmm. And so I just couldn't put it down. Yeah. So it's magic to me too. And I mean, I, I get like, you know, I'm an adult and I still consider it that just because it is so, I'm still mesmerized by. Yeah. And I, <laughs> myself as well. Instruments. Myself as well. Yeah. There's. We're going to see uh, Steve Vai in about a month or two, and that's one of the most magical guitar players I've ever seen. And it reminds me when you have people like that that is, you know, are the people that motivate you to play. And uh, it's just it's it's magic to another level is what it is. Absolutely, <laughs> for sure. 
Yeah. So were you mostly self-taught when you were so young? Oh, completely to play self, guitar? self-taught, yeah. That's so impressive. I, yeah. I love them. I think that's the... And there's nothing... Guitar lessons are great. I mean, John teaches guitar and like, yeah. it's fantastic. But I mean, being self-taught is so... I just think it's so impressive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I had taken a, a, just a couple of lessons and decided quickly that that's not, that's not fun to me. It just wasn't mm-hmm. fun. And the, if I could see the long game, it probably would have been better to... If somebody can yell out a chord at me and, you know, sure, I'll throw it down. But to right. me, it was, it was, if I'm going to go upstairs and sit in my room and play guitar, it was more fun just to let me figure out yes. the chords. And, and you can, if you see me play the guitar, you can tell there's little hints that I taught myself too. Like I'll play a D chord backwards, mm-hmm. you know, little things like that. Where yeah. You can tell if, if you're a seasoned musician, you can look and go, who taught that guy? You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, it makes you, it's, there's a lot of pride in that. Like yeah. it, it's, you're proud of yourself because you earned that. And I'm, I'm also the kind of person where I like to figure things out myself. I just have to see how things work on my own just because it's how my brain works. Right. You know, like John, um, got me bass guitar for dummies a while ago. And it's not, I like that though. Like I like to look at, I like to read up on it and just figure it out for myself because then when you do figure it out, it's very like, um, rewarding yeah that's the word i'm looking for absolutely yeah yeah to be able to say oh i learned that myself and right. i read the book and i figure or i watched a youtube video or whatever it is like yeah. you know just however you figure it out for yourself is very rewarding and you get to say like i taught myself how to play guitar and i think that's a really thing like it's something nobody can take away from you that's true absolutely yeah so what were some of your, so you said the Beatles, I know, like you liked to, were they one of your early inspirations as far as like music? That was like when I was six or seven. Music or you enjoyed was, yeah, back in the day. When I got into my teen years and my girlfriend who's sitting over there, Jackie, mm-hmm. we always talk about the best years for music were the late 70s when, when music was coming out back then, um, like the Eagles putting out Hotel California Life in the Fast Lane or... Zeppelin and Boston and Kansas. I mean, some of the music that was coming out, we knew when it came out that it was classic rock. You didn't have to wait 10 or 20 years to see if it stood the test of time. Right. We knew. Staying power. Yeah, Stairway to Heaven came out. Freebird came out, you know. So yeah. that was probably the most influential time for me to really work harder than normal. At a guitar, at, a, at my playing, because there was so much inspiration coming out of the radio. It was just, yeah, it was easy to pick up a guitar and try to be better when not when that kind of music you know surrounds you. Oh yeah, I totally agree. I don't listen to. I mean, I listen to just. I don't know any new songs. This is like might sound stupid, but I don't listen to the radio because I always have my Bluetooth in my car. So like, I just like to control like what playlist and what music is on. Sure. And as far as like, it, that's the that's the way it is now. Yeah. Sure, yeah. And I don't know. I mean, I know some new songs. I don't listen to pop radio. I guess now because it used to be that top forty was top forty. It was whether it was country or rock or right. whatever. Top forty was just what was the top what forty where it's yeah. right. And so now it's like there's a pop radio station and a country radio station, and like it's just really hard for me to respect some of the stuff that's coming out now. And I know that sounds pretentious, but oh no, that's how I feel. That's <laughs> true. It's to me, it's difficult to find inspirational music, and I know it's out there. It's, it's right. just sometimes the best music is not the music that everybody, I mean, to me, what I like is not what, you know, it would not make the top 40. Right, I'm I agree. I'm not sure if Zeppelin came out right now if they would, if they could make it, you know, it's just a different time. It is, for sure. And that's why we like to interview local musicians, because there is music coming out now from local musicians that is fantastic. I agree, a thousand percent. And it's so good. Yeah. And it just, it gives me inspiration, because there is so much stuff on pop radio and country radio now that, like, just sucks. It's it's formulaic. Right. It's It just all sounds the same to me, and it's just, maybe I'm just cynical and I'm getting older, I don't know, but. Right. Um, and just, especially with country music, because I like country, I like country country music like real country music old school probably right Li- yeah, yeah I like Johnny Cash and Willie Nelson I, I like real country music right. and like Towns Van Zandt you know I don't this country music that's on the radio now is what we call pop country pop. yeah it's not 
really country pop music. music with a country accent. It is a fake country <laughs> accent. Fake country like accent. most of the sometimes it's real, but I mean most of the time it is like you know, and that's what sells, and it's whatever. But it's right. like it's just very formulaic. It literally, it's this is so cynical of me, but it literally all sounds the same to me. Yeah, <laughs> it all sounds like. So anyway, I digress, but that's why I like local musicians. I love some of the stuff that, um, I love all the stuff that all of our clients are putting out now. I think it's all fantastic. I do too. And so it's too. very encouraging. Yeah. Um, so I'm really excited to hear y'all's debut record with Sugar Leaf. I'm, I oh, good, can't yeah. wait. We're anxious to get it out there. So you're hoping by like beginning of 2023 maybe? Yes. Okay. Yes, we'd love to have it out by then. Cool. For sure. That'd be great. Yeah, that's another project that COVID derailed a yeah, little bit. sure did. Yeah. And where do you guys go to record? Do you have your own studio? We do. I do have my own studio, So, but we do uh, the bulk of the tracks at the Jam Room oh, yeah. in, in Rosewood. Yes. And then I take the tracks back home, add guitars or vocals or tweak whatever we want to do, uh, and then take it back to the Jam Room to have it mixed and mastered. Okay, cool. I love the Jam Room. Great place. Uh, we do too. Yeah. So how often... Um, or what has Sugar Leaf got on the um, docket right now? Yeah, we just finished that gig at Hemingway's that we've been planning, you know, for a while. Mm -hmm. And uh, we don't have anything booked at the moment, but I'm sure that probably by the middle of next week that'll change. Yeah. Because <laughs> we try to stay busy. We're going to try to stay busy, but right now we're going to try to finish up that CD is going to be our that focus for the next month or two. So For sure. That's great. And so that's going to, you know, a lot of getting together. And, yeah. 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 That's great. But that's fun. I it mean, is it's fun. very just, I love the camaraderie of that. And, it is. It's, and, it's part of our life. It's our lifestyle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And when it comes out, you know, like we were talking about earlier, it's like that is something to be proud of. Like you work so hard on that, and that is your baby. You it know? Is. <laughs> and that's the beauty of having a home studio, too. Is oh, you I You go bet. into the studio and that you've got 12 hours to get it right. Yeah. If it's, you just didn't hit it right that day, you weren't in the mood that day, especially when you're doing things like vocals, mm -hmm. where my voice doesn't sound like it, it might sound better tomorrow, you know, with a glass right. of wine or, you know. Oh, yeah. So that's what's the beauty is of having your own home studio is you can tweak it until there's nothing that you would change about it and then put it out. Yeah, that's what I, um, I'm so jealous. Like we, eventually we want to do a home studio um, it's our dream just because I agree completely and yeah. um, I was watching a Rolling Stones documentary the other day and Ron Wood was talking about his home studio that he built in the basement of his home and just talking about how so many famous people came over and recorded and I was just like oh that's the dream to have a home yeah. studio man. <laughs> yeah that's how the Foo Fighters got started because Dave Grohl did yeah. everything played drums bass guitar wrote all the music in his basement and, you know, your home studio doesn't have to be, cost a lot of money, just a cheap studio just to capture your ideas. Yeah. And then you can, what he did, bring in other members to record it and take it to another studio if you want to, or take yeah. it someplace to get mastered. It's, yeah. the, it's the new way of recording. For sure. Yeah. And we have some musicians that um, over COVID, you know, they learn to mix and master themselves and like learning all these new skills. And there's so many moving parts to recording an album, you know. Um, there's so many people behind the scenes or there's, or so many tasks behind the scenes, whether, you it know, is. like working in your own studio or whatever. So, um, I know like some people learn to do studio work over COVID just because they were so isolated and, um, it's just cool because yeah, there's, there's so much that goes into it. It's a, yeah, there's a lot to that as well. That's like learning another instrument. Oh yeah, absolutely. I can't even imagine like it's, um. It's just cool, like when we, we went to a CD release party like earlier in the summer and um, it's cool when the musician brings out the, oh, this is the guy that did this and this is the guy that did that. And right. you get to see all the moving parts of what made this album that you now listen to. And love, right, so. right. And learning how to do some of that stuff is like going back to school. <laughs> yeah, it's, especially with all the technology that it just continues to advance, yeah. you know. Yeah, it doesn't come with directions. No. <laughs> Open up the box, there's no directions. No, you just have to learn it. You either learn it yourself or someone teaches you how, but um, yeah. yeah. A little of both. Yeah. So what uh, what would you describe your writing process as? Um, I know like you've been writing for a, a really long time, like I decades, have. and I'm sure it's probably changed. It, yeah, and every song I, is a little bit different. Um, I've woken up in the morning, like some musicians I'm sure I've told you, just with a song in my head mm -hmm. and just wrote it down. And those are the 
that's the lucky ones. There's some songs that have taken a year or two to write yeah. just because you, you know, you hit a small wall and you're looking for a little bit of ins inspiration to put in the right line. Cause you know, you're going to, when you play it, that it's going to be under a microscope, you know, with some of the people that have been seeing you play for a long time. Mm -hmm. So you want to get it to where it's something that you're super proud of. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's, I mean, most of the times it's the, it's the music first and I hear melodies in the music and then the words usually come easy after that. Yeah, that's what I've heard a lot of too, is like music first and um, it reminds me of like, I know Paul from the Beatles like says, he says that about Let It Be, that he just woke up one day. Is that the right song I'm thinking about? Let It Be, where he just woke up one day and had it in his head? Uh, yeah, that's right. I think it is, yeah. That was that one. Um, and I did see an interview with him that was very interesting because when he would, they would have the music first, and he would, they'd want let, and he'd have the melody in his head, but he wouldn't have the lyrics. Mm -hmm. So he would just start singing random things. I like scrambled eggs, and then just come, I'll come back later and fix what that says. But yeah. he would just sing anything he could think of until, because he had the melody, had the music, just didn't have the words. Right, yeah. And that's, you know, like we said, there's a lot of moving parts, and that's important to yeah. be able to, and, and you, you learn to trust yourself throughout yeah. that process. Yeah. Obviously, being a prolific songwriter, and, you know, you learn to trust yourself. Like, I'll come back, and I will fix it, and, you know, there's just... Yeah. You live in your own head, and you know your own process. So. Yeah, yeah. And you hear music that sometimes it's something that you're attracted to. It's not... I mean, it might be your style, but it's just a little bit different, but it's something that you fall in love with. And um, I get accused of being a sponge and just going, okay, I heard, I heard that, you know, we went and saw a David Gray concert, and then two weeks later, I'm working on a song. It's like, I kind of hear David Gray in that song. Yeah. It's very... You know, you, were, you can tell you were influenced yeah. by that. And it's like, yeah, yeah, I'm drawing what, you know, what made my hair stand up on my arms. And I want to put that in my songs and, and have that effect on people. For sure. There's nothing wrong with being a sponge. That's yeah. like, that's what music is for yeah. in the yeah. end, you know. That's right. Well, and it's important to when you're writing, um, like we were saying earlier, that people appreciate your music because when you are bringing the material that you worked so hard on, whether it was for a month or a year or two, you know, that's your... That's just very raw and important to you. So yeah. when you're bringing that, when you're bringing the words, um, it is important that other, like your bandmates have at least a respect for it. Whether if they, oh, sure. even if they want to change it or they don't like it, it's like at least the, the respect is a very important part. I agree. I agree. Well, um, thank you so much for being here. Well, today. thank you again for having um, me. Yeah, I it's really so nice to it. get to know you. And um, will um, can we talk in the description about like tease the Sugar Leaf album coming out? Like, Absolutely. Okay. Cool. Absolutely. All right. Well, we're looking forward to that. And um, when it comes out, we'll definitely you know we'll promote it on the Soda City Jams right, great. page and great. everything. And um, yeah, thanks for jamming with us. Well, thank you very much. Thank you.